Welcome to our campsite. We are in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, right on the border of Wisconsin. And you know what this region is famous for? The fish fry. And not just the fish fry, they have this really amazing coleslaw I have never heard of before. It's called crimson slaw. And we're gonna make that, and we're gonna fry some fish. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be absolutely delicious. I'm sure we might have a few people in the campground kind of wander over and say, hey, you got more? <laughs> Rich and I really do love cooking outdoors, and it's probably something you do when you go camping, you cook outdoors. But what we do even more is we prep outdoors when we cook outdoors. We can prep in our, our kitchen, which is kind of cool to do, but I like to be out, we like to be out here together, and it's such a nice day. So I'm doing all my prep here, and obviously I've got to put it in the refrigerator to get the flavors to melt, but most everything will be done here. So because we are outdoors, you may hear dogs, children, planes, trains, automobiles, and see a camper or two go by. So I apologize in advance for that. So we're gonna jump right into this crimson slaw. So what is crimson slaw? It is coleslaw made from red cabbage with red onion, green onion, very onion heavy, and cranberries. Have you ever heard of that? I surely have, and I love cabbage and I love coleslaw. So I had to do some research. I only found a couple of recipes for crimson slaw and I tried um, one of them and decided what I wanted to change and what I wanted to keep the same. And I kept most of it the same. This one, however, is um, an interesting recipe that includes cumin, which you would not think would go into a coleslaw, but that little bit of cumin really makes a difference. So I have my slaw, my red onions, and my green onions in here. I, I sliced it all up to a little bit bigger than bite sizes. So that's here, We're waiting for its dressing. So now I'm going to make the dressing. So we have olive oil. This is a really easy slaw to make. Red wine vinegar. This is a mayo slaw, I forgot to mention that. Sugar, you're gonna need the sugar with all the tartness of the cranberries. And then we have some ground mustard, salt, pepper, and that little bit of cumin. That if you made this about the cumin, it would still be wonderful. If you're a little funky about cumin, don't put the cumin in. I wanted to try it because I'm a little funky about cumin. Like sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't, and I was really kind of worried about it. But I really liked what it brought to the dish. It kind of made it, it made it more than than what it could have been, or made it more than what it is. I don't know. I liked it. It was really good. Okay, I'm just whisking this together, and I think I've got a good whisk. And as you whisk like this, your, your sugar is going to start to dissolve, which is what you want. Okay, get that in here, and I'm going to get my cabbage. Pour this over the entire bowl of cabbage. And I'm going to toss distribute everything together. Oh, I put some parsley in here. I forgot to mention that. I chopped that up too. Just a little bit for some color. Okay, so once you have it all distributed nicely, in go the cranberries. And I know it sounds weird, cranberries and slaw, but it is so good. It is one of the most delicious slaws I have ever had. And I am so thankful for the state of Wisconsin of um, bringing it to my attention because I am going to eat this regularly. Okay, that looks good to me. Now, with most slaws, you can pretty much, I'd say, just eat them right after you made them. All salads like this benefit from being in the refrigerator sometime for some, for some time. But this one for sure needs to get all these flavors to settle down and melt together. So I'm going to go throw this in the refrigerator and then Rich is going to fry up some fish. Great Lakes Whitefish one of my favorite fish of all times. It's got a nice hearty texture to it and a very light, mild flavor. So what I did was went down to one of the local fishmongers here in town and picked up some fresh caught whitefish fillets. I've cut them into the size of about a playing card. Um, so about that big around, you can see there. And you can see it's a fairly thin fish and I've also left the skin on it as well. So one of the things I wanna do is dredge it in a flour blend. So I have here two cups of our gluten-free flour blend and to that, I'm gonna add a salt and pepper mixture, paprika, garlic powder, and onion powder. And the recipe for the dredge will be in the description below as well as our website, gfexplorers.com. And then you just give this a little whisk Get it all nice and incorporated and don't forget to spill a little bit on your cutting board.
All right, that looks pretty good. Take a look at my oil. It's about 320. I want to start it at about 360 degrees because as soon as you add a couple of fillets in there, it's going to drop and then we want to fry at a good solid 350 degrees. So we're going to wait a minute to let this oil come up to temperature. An RV kitchen is a small space and frying fish isn't always the ideal thing to cook in your small RV kitchen. So we like to cook things like that outside. And my setup is an electric induction burner with a small cast iron Dutch oven on the top of it. I've got about an inch and a half of oil in it. You don't need a lot of oil and a temperature gauge here so I can monitor my temperatures. All right, our oil's up to temp. It's at 365. It's time to fry some fish. I've got our dredge station set up. I've got our fish. I've got a container with a couple of beaten eggs in it because we want something to that for that flour to stick to. And then I've got our flour blend that we put together a little bit earlier. So we're going to go right into our egg mixture, coating the whole filet right into our flour. Coat both sides. And shake off your excess and right into your pan, leaning away from you in case there's any splash up. Do the same thing with this guy. And then I think we can put probably one more in. All right, and we're gonna let those guys go. I'm gonna clean up my flour club hand here. And these are gonna cook for about four to six minutes until they're golden brown and start to float up to the top. We got trains. We got dogs barking and we have fish frying. And this is golden brown and delicious and floating up to the top, so it's time to bring it out. Shake off the excess oil. Oh, look at that. That looks just about perfect. Sounds like our train has passed. I'm gonna go ahead and get the last of this fish into the fryer. All right, the last of our fish is golden brown and delicious. So we're gonna go ahead and get it out of the fryer. Look at that, you guys. That looks awesome. We're gonna take it, hit it with a little bit of lemon. And now we're gonna get this over to the table, set the table, get our slaw that's been chilling out of the refrigerator and some tartar sauce and we're ready to eat. Forks in Forks hand. Forks in hand, we're ready to eat. We've got our fish, we've got our crimson slaw. Let's dig right in. Let's get oh, some tartar sauce we also on have We also have our homemade tartar sauce. We'll link to that recipe down in the description below and you can find it on the website. Okay, is that enough or do we want more? Let's do a little more. Okay. That looks great. Do okay, we need I'm, a squirt, squirt of lemon? Yeah, hit it with a lemon again okay. for sure. Okay. okay, I'm going for the fish I'm first. going for the slaw. All right. Messy slaw. Oh my. Wow. I'm making a mess, but it's good. I'll go first since you have your mouth full. Light, flaky, very mild flavor good spices in the dredge and nice and crispy coming right out of that fryer. Whoops, I'm making a mess here. Wow, absolutely. The, the, the fish is to die for. The slaw is um, absolutely delicious. I like the little bit of cumin in there, like I said earlier. Excuse me while I eat. <laughs> it gives it just a different flavor. It's, just, it's unexpected, but very welcome. Um, it's not too sweet. It's a little bit sweet and savory, which I do love about that. So I'm going in for the the fish. So while you're tasting the fish, when you brought up the idea of cranberries <laughs> and coleslaw, I am a, one of the people that believes that fruit belongs with dessert only primarily, unless you've got duck, then that's the exception for me. But that coleslaw is really, really good. The, the tartness of the cranberry. Yes, it, it, it just all works yeah, together really, really well. Um, so if you're looking for a different slaw that maybe somebody in your area has never seen before, because I think this is a very Midwestern thing, mm -hmm. take this to your next cookout, barbecue, family gathering. People are going to love it. Or your next fish fry. Yeah, or fish fry.
And it doesn't even have to be Friday. Exactly. What? It's not Friday. Is no. It? No, not Friday. Well, thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm. We're really happy that you could join us here in our campsite. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. We'd really yeah. appreciate that. And also the thumbs up, that really helps us out if you could do that as well. Yeah. And a link to this recipe is down in the description below, or you can find it at gfexplorers.com along with all of our other recipes. And don't forget to smash that notification bell so you're alerted when we do delicious recipes oh, yeah. just like this one. Or you can sign up for our newsletter, which the link is in the description below or on our website. So. Until next time, happy, happy eating. eating. Okay, let's eat.